This is an online course, Design and Development for Subject Matter Experts, SMEs. When you talk about subject matter experts, you are referring to those that are going to help to develop the content for online uh, studies, for online programs. They are the content experts, though there are different kinds of content, you could be an expert in your area of content. But the content experts we are referring to here are those that are content experts in the subject matter in the area of curriculum in the universities. For example, those that are experts in sociology, you are experts in language, you are experts in biblical studies. These are the experts we are referring to in this instance because it's, that word expert could be used relatively. Now, we'll go, the goal for the course is one, to enhance course writers' expertise on online design and development for open and distance education. The second goal is to improve on the quality of course content. In Nigeria and in Africa generally, it is observed that we are still struggling to get it right with our online course design. So this particular material is designed to help those that want to improve on themselves to enhance their quality of their expertise in course material design for online. And now we have what we call course intended learning outcome. In course intended learning outcome, it is recommended when you want to work towards competency base. Before now, what we have is a learning objective but we have different authorities coming up researchers that with learning objective you are not actually able to acquire the skills you need to acquire especially at the university level because when you are setting your learning objective is either you are identifying defining um, maybe analyzing organizing and so on but right now from the expertise and the researches that have been carried out, it has come up to say that when you go with such learning objective, you will not actually help the students or the learner to come up with the things they need to come up with. So in this regard, what is invoked now that they are preaching that all university education should imbibe, if we must get the skill that is required, is the intended learning outcome. When we're talking about the tender learning outcome, what is it talking about? We are looking at what is that skill that you want your students to take away at the end of the course? Because knowing the skill will help you to actually work towards what the students need to do to be able to acquire the skill. Because industries are even complaining that they're tired of having graduate trainings. Even in their area of expertise, they find them training graduates. So right here, by the end of this course, you would have analyzed a learning context towards the design of a specific online course. Secondly, design an online course that meets the required competencies and learning outcome. Three, develop an interactive online course, which is usually an area that is really, really difficult to catch up with. Because if your online course is not interactive, definitely you won't be able to carry the students along. Then fourth, develop feedback mechanism that will have positive impact on learning. And the fifth one is to design formative and summative evaluation that will help achieve specific course outcome or course outcomes. Now, these are the intended learning outcome. These are the skills that this course is trying to imbibe on whoever that will take the course. For the learners that are going to take the course, in this instance, the learner are the subject matter experts. Now, there are certain things we need to consider when you are analyzing for online course design. You don't go straight into writing. There are certain things that inform what you're going to write. There are things that guide how you're going to write. This has nothing to do with the content. This has nothing to do with the content. Yes, you could be a content expert, but if you are a content expert and the content is not pulled down in the appropriate way, it could be misleading 
and on the long run, the expertise of the content that ought to have come to be will be lost. So in this case, the first thing we need to look at is the need assessment. When you are trying to write a course material, are we talking about need assessment? What are we referring to in this instance? The need assessment could come in the area of what kind of knowledge will these learners actually need? What kind of uh, knowledge are they requesting? What kind of knowledge are they lacking? And what kind of knowledge will they need that will be useful to them and be useful to the society and help in economic growth? Now you find that what is the social part that they will require that will help them drive that knowledge that you have identified that they need. Then you then look at the, uh, the availability of the different resources that will help them to meet up and actually teach them the skills that are required to meet that knowledge. Then you look at the economic environment and the political environment. These are the things you need to analyze before you go into writing. Yes, in our own case here, using our own care test Nigeria, we have the National University Commission who is in charge of the curriculum. The curriculum may have been designed giving us the benchmark on what we need to teach. But again, you need to now analyze it to ensure that that program that you are writing for and the content that is being given, it matches the program. Remember, what NUC is giving to us is minimum. If you could increase it, you could add to it to meet what is being required, the goal that has been set in that particular program and where the course will come in. Now, this takes us to the learning goal. What goal is it that we are trying to meet? What is that goal that we want to meet? Because there must be a goal. Yes, you want to write a course material. The content has been spelled out. What are we going to use the content for? If the learner is done learning everything in the content, what is the purpose for the learner to learn that thing that is in the content? That takes us to the goal. And coming to Nigeria, I'm using Nigeria as an example because this is the environment that I am very much familiar with. Right there, using the Nigeria as an example, you see that in the national policy of education, we have the national goal for education. And from the national goal, we are able to come up with the goal for the university, different levels of education, the university, the primary, and so on. Right here, again, we are concerned with the university level. And within the university level, there is a goal that broke up to different programs of studies. And within the program, you have courses. So in this area, is that goal that must be identified. Because when you are writing, that writing must meet with the goal. When you are giving example, the example must go with the goal. Whereby the goal is not well spelled out, then you need to redefine the goal to ensure that the writing will be intact. This takes us to learner's context. Now you have know what the learner needs to learn. We have a goal where the learner is going to. The next thing that needs to come up now is what is the environment that where the learner is going to learn, how is it like? And this will involve even the lecturers that are going to teach the learner. Are the lecturers well equipped? Then you come to resources. What available resources are they having to learn? And you come down to the, the wherever they live. Who, what are the category that of the students that you are going to teach? Now this take us to what we refer to as learner characteristics. When you get to the content, the concept is with the environment. Everything in the environment, equipment, material resources, everything in the environment. Now you come to the learner characteristics. In the area of the learner characteristics, you try to find out who are the learners? Who are my writing for? Because if you don't know whom you are writing for, you may either overload them or underload them. So therefore, you need to know the group of persons you really need to write for. Yes, I'm writing for university students, fine. But within the university students, you have different characteristics among the students. There are some that their ages are not the same. You have those that are 18 years of age, even now 16 years of age, 15, 
although it is against the rule in Nigeria, if you are not up to 16, you won't gain admission to the university. But from 16, you are qualified to enter the university. So once you have a 16, and remember again, you're going to have age above that, you could have up to 60 and above. Like in the open and distant learning environment, before now we see it, oh, it's an environment that is meant for only the adult learners. But these days, it's no longer the adult learners that are coming in. I cite an example with National Open University of Nigeria. We are having students that are younger than 20 in National Open University of Nigeria. And at the same time, you are having students that are up to 70 plus. So therefore, there must be a blend in the kind of language, in the kind of uh, uh, presentation, in the kind of example you're going to cite. Now you look at these learners again. Right here, you have learners that have different religious backgrounds. All the learners are not coming from the same religious background. This calls that when you are citing your example, you must consider this. You wouldn't cite an example, for example, citing only those that has to do with the Christian dog, or you talk about the Muslim religion. And you have to be careful with things that are, you know, that can easily aggravate anger within the society. So we must be careful with the kind of words we use. That is why it's good for you to know whom your learners are. If not, in the process of writing, yes to you, you just set example, you only cited an example, and before you know it, it can lead to so many other things in the country. So it's good for you. And at the same time, apart from even leading to chaos in the country, it could affect the learner. Because again, if you are citing example and you keep using he, 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 the she will say, well, I don't think I am part of this class. I don't think this material is meant for me. So you need to know everything about them. Then the next thing you need to know about the characteristics is their educational background. There are some people that are coming to the distance education. They have left schooling for a long time, only to come back after several years. Some have even left schooling maybe 10 years, 15 years interval, some 20 and they are coming back to continue their education. Whereas some are fresh from the secondary school and they are coming into the university. So therefore, there must be a blend where you're going to synergize to ensure that these students are all carried along. In your citing example, in the kind of words you use, you carry along. Now, I want to expand more on the goal. When you are talking about the goal, let me use this for example, on the go right here. Now, let's pick this. This is the big goal. Let's assume this is the national goal here. If this is the national goal, then from the national goal, you're going to break out to different level of schooling. Yes, what do we need for our children to acquire this, to do this, for the society to be this? Yes, we need primary school. You come in here. We need primary school, you need secondary school, you need tertiary education, polytechnic, and so on. Then in each of the goals, you will have a further breakdown. And that breakdown could not come down to say, well, we need the university. This is the university we needed. We need this university. That's why I say here, step one, step two, step three. I'm taking the word from Dick. Now, step one, step two, step three is just representing levels. Now you come to step one, which is representing the university. Within the university, you could have programs. And within the programs, you're going to have courses. So you discover that everything you're going to do in the university up till the time of your course writing in open and distance learning, it will go back to the goal. It will have a reflection of the goal that you want to meet. Where that goal is not met, then there will be a problem. That is where you see, oh, we will have trained, the graduates will train, they are not meeting with the standard, and so on and so forth. So we need to actually have a good understanding of what the goal is before we continue.